Let me read to you a passage from the third chapter of St. John's Gospel, verses 1 to 8. It's the Gospel for Monday, after the second Sunday in Easter. St. John writes, Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. That's from John chapter 3 verses 1 to 8. Our Lord refers to the kingdom of God. In the book of Genesis we read of God's sentence upon the serpent. I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He shall crush your head and you shall lie in wait for his heel. Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. We may say that implicit in this divine prediction is the presence of two kingdoms on the earth and they are in conflict. There is the realm of the serpent and the realm of the woman, that of his seed and her seed. There is also the prediction that from the woman will come the victor and the victory and God has aligned himself with the seed of the woman. In the divine promise to Abraham there is the hint of a great kingdom to come. It will consist of the children of Abraham in some sense. Further, God will be working with them. It will be his realm. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, so that you shall be a blessing. I will bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you. In you all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Genesis chapter 12 verse 2 to 3. In the blessing that Jacob pronounced over his twelve sons, especially noteworthy is the blessing on Judah. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the staff from between his feet, until he comes to whom it belongs. To him shall be the obedience of nations. Genesis chapter 49 verse 10. There is to be a divinely sanctioned kingdom coming forth from Judah, and to that king shall belong a universal obedience. To him shall be given the scepter of Judah. So God's kingdom is coming and at its head will be a king from the tribe of Judah. In the book of Deuteronomy, Moses promises to the people that if you continue to heed the voice of the Lord your God, the Lord your God will raise you high above all the nations of the earth. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1. The Lord, we read, will beat down before you the enemies that rise up against you. He will establish you as a people sacred to himself. Chapter 28, verse 7. Then there was the especially significant promise of God to David. When your days are fulfilled, I will raise up your seed after you, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for, me, for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be... To him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Your throne shall form forever. These predictions were amplified in the prophets, casting more light on the Messiah King. God's kingdom was coming, and it was essential that all be in it. The problem was that its nature was not clearly delineated. There needed to be an interpreter, a teacher, a prophet to provide a definitive understanding. 
It was widely expected that the kingdom would be of a temporal character, and this was natural. For example, when Satan tempted Christ in the wilderness, he tempted him to seek this as the fulfilment of the prophecies. Having shown him all the kingdoms of the world, he said, To you will I give all this power and this glory, for to me they have been delivered. Luke chapter 4 verse 6, of course, Jesus was indeed the promised king. The angel Gabriel had said to Mary that the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he shall be king over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Luke chapter 1 verse 32 to 33. But the angel in the gospel of St. Matthew had hinted at a different kind of kingdom from what was expected. And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. The realm would be spiritual. This was a singularly original revelation of Jesus Christ as his preaching on the kingdom of God unfolded. He eschewed the idea of a temporal kingdom and gradually presented a kingdom that was a complete surprise even to his disciples. It was not, as Christ said to Pilate, a kingdom for which the world would aspire. It had to do with the taking away of the sin of the world and living in God, just as Jesus lived in the Father and the Father in him. All of this brings us to the Gospel passage I read earlier from John chapter 3 verse 1 to 8, in which our Lord, having heard from Nicodemus a confession of faith, speaks of the kingdom of God and entry into it. I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. A new birth was required. Nicodemus had characteristically interpreted this in temporal and material terms. A radical personal change or newness of life at the root of one's being was involved, and God would effect it through his Spirit and through water. Baptism was necessary for entry. Christ's charge to his disciples of a worldwide mission included baptism. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 28 verse 19. It was in this way that the prophecies were fulfilled. They were prophecies of a spiritual kingdom, which of course had ramifications for the temporal order. Christ, in speaking of the last judgment, says that the king will say, Come, blessed of my father, take possession of the kingdom prepared for you, for I was hungry and you gave me to drink. Matthew chapter 25, verse 34 to 35. Notice this. Christ says, I was hungry. He has united himself with every man, especially the most needy. It is those who are in union with him by intent who are citizens of this kingdom. This kingdom is not a worldly one. It consists, above all, in union with Jesus Christ, and the means of entry into this kingdom is baptism by water and the Spirit. Let us live the life of God then with Jesus Christ as our King.